So the work energy principle states that the net work done on an object is gonna equal the changing kinetic energy of that object. And this works for systems as well. So the net work done on a system of objects is gonna equal the change in the total kinetic energy of the objects in that system. Now that sounds really complicated and technical, but I like to think about the work energy principle as a shortcut. This is a really nice shortcut that lets me determine the change in kinetic energy without having to do a bunch of complicated conservation of energy equations or kinematic formulas. The catch is that I need to know how to figure out what the net work is. So how do you figure out net work? Well, the formula for work done is FD cosine theta. Since this formula, work energy principle, relies on net work, this has to be magnitude of the net force times magnitude of the distance traveled times cosine of theta. Remember this theta has to be angle between not any angle, angle between the net force direction and the direction of motion. And so let's, let's try this out. How do you use this thing? Let's kick the tires. Let's say there's a satellite, it's moving to the right, and there's a net force on this satellite. Now this net force could go in any direction. If the net force has a component in the direction of motion, then the net work's gonna be positive. And if so, anything here from like negative 90, well, I guess like negative 89.9 because the 90 would be perpendicular from anywhere for like 89.9 negative to positive 89.9. You've got a component in the direction of motion. That means you're going to be doing positive network. And that means the change in kinetic energy will be positive because it just equals that number. That means kinetic energy increases. You're going to be speeding up. And that kind of, it makes sense intuitively. If your force is in the direction of motion, you're speeding up. Uh, what about the other case? What if your net force points in the opposite direction of motion? Well, now the net work's going to be negative. You'll have a negative change in kinetic energy. In other words, you're going to slow down. And if the net force points perpendicular, well, then you're not doing any work because cosine of 90 is going to be zero. No net work would be done. There's going to be no change in kinetic energy. That doesn't mean you stop. It just means you're not going to speed up or slow down. This does something. You might be like, doesn't it do something? Yeah, you're going to drift upward. You're going to start changing your direction, but this is not gonna be doing any work on you at that moment. And so just to be clear, I mean, let's just try a complicated one here. Let's say this force goes in some direction. Let's say your velocity even goes down. So maybe, maybe your satellite's heading downward and your force is gonna go in any direction. Well, if it goes this way, exactly backwards, it's gonna be 180, you're gonna be doing negative work, you're gonna be slowing down, decreasing kinetic energy, and you're not gonna change direction. If you're like this, you have a component opposite, so you're gonna be slowing down and changing direction. This will just be changing direction. You're not speeding up or slowing down at that moment. This will speed you up and change your direction. And finally, this will just be speeding you up and you will not be changing your direction. So the work energy principle is convenient to just get a conceptual or qualitative idea of what's going on. And it can obviously also give you an idea of how to calculate things. So let's try Let's try one where you actually have to get a number. So let's say there's a hot air balloon and it's a 300 kilogram hot air balloon drifting to the left. It had an initial speed of seven meters per second and it's traveling a total of 50 meters to the left during this journey. Now there's gonna be forces on this hot air balloon. Obviously there's gonna be gravity and some buoyant force, but because these are perpendicular to the direction of motion, they do no work. And so when we're gonna use this work energy principle, they're not even gonna factor in. We don't even have to know these since they were perpendicular and did no work. You only consider the forces in the direction of motion. So let's say there was a wind gust helping you to the left here of 200 newtons, but this is a big bulky balloon, not that aerodynamic. And so there was a drag force from air resistance of 104 newtons to the right. And what we want to know is we want to determine the final speed of the hot air balloon after it travels 50 meters directly to the left with the forces shown. Now there's lots of different ways to do this. You know, Newton's laws, you can do uh, kinematic formulas, all kinds of stuff even momentum technically, impulse, but the easiest, I'm pretty sure the easiest way to do this is just gonna be the work energy principle, which states that the net work done is gonna equal the change in kinetic energy. So let's go ahead and do it. So we know that net work is equal to the magnitude of the net force times the magnitude of the distance traveled times cosine of the angle between them. What's change in kinetic energy mean? Well, change in anything is final minus initial. So since kinetic energy is one half mv squared, this is just gonna be one half m v final squared minus one half m v initial squared. So this is gonna be the change in kinetic energy, final minus initial. All right, let's plug in numbers here. So net force, how do we get that? Vertical pieces don't matter. We're just looking horizontally here. Those are the only ones that are gonna affect it. These vertical ones just cancel. So we have 200 to the left, 
104 to the right, so we're going to have to subtract those to get 96 to the left. And we just want magnitude, so I'm going to get 96 newtons to the left, not negative or anything, I'm just taking magnitude. Times the distance traveled, we know that's 50. So we get times 50 meters. Cosine of the angle, now this is careful, you might be like, uh oh, 180 here, but no, the net force points to the left, this 200 is winning here. So leftward net force and the leftward direction, the angle between those two is zero, cosine of zero is just one, we're maxed out here. So net force points in the direction of motion. So equals, we'll plug in the rest of this, one half, the mass is 300 kilograms, times V final squared, that's what we wanna determine, minus one half, 300 kilograms times the initial speed is seven meters per second. So we got seven meters per second squared. Well, 96 times 50 is gonna come out to 4,800. That means that's the net work done. Notice that's joules. That's how much energy we've added. That's the change in kinetic energy. So we know the network is changing kinetic energy. We've added 4,800 joules of kinetic energy. That's gonna to have to equal Half of 300 is 150 kilograms times V final squared minus, if you take a half of 300 times seven squared, you're gonna get 7350. So this is how much energy the hot air balloon started with initially. So I have to move that to the left. We add those together. I'm gonna get 12,150 joules is how much kinetic energy the balloon ends with and that's gotta equal 150 kilograms times V final squared. I could divide 12,150 by 150 and you get exactly 81, and that's gonna equal V final squared, and if you take a square root of that, you get exactly nine. So the final velocity of this hot air balloon is nine meters per second. It's sped up. That's not surprising. This net force was directed leftward, and the object was moving leftward, so we're doing positive work, we're increasing the kinetic energy. We started with seven meters per second, we ended with nine meters per second. And this is an example of how you use the work energy principle. So to recap, the work energy principle states the network is equal to the change in kinetic energy. This can help you just conceptually or qualitatively determine whether something's gonna speed up, slow down, or change direction, or both. And then quantitatively, you can use this to specifically solve for the change in kinetic energy, as well as the final or initial speed something might have had.